continue of course like always now what we need to do is the rivets we need to do some other things and we'll be almost ready we have a little bit of a feedback also but uh, i don't know if we will do it <laughs> i'm a little bit rebellious against some feedback sometimes but we'll see it's okay probably they will come into conclusion but for now we will just keep on working now i will go and add a mesh which is a plane of course i will add a plane go to tab press s make it small g put it here disable the the snap because it was enabled why it was enabled because i was testing some things how to make the rivets and it's not it's not very pretty but hopefully we'll be able to achieve greatness now i go from up put this around here press s and try to do it by the way this will be nicer if we do it with symmetry with the mirror so add modifier mirror it's here can we move the mirror by the way let me see go to object mode i will try something origins i will try to move the origins and this is by the way a uh, purely experimental aha uh -huh, i can do it so here i move the origins by going to this options and click origins now i'm moving only the origins and when i'm ready i will just disable it and now i can move it like a normal thing at least it should be we'll see so press tab go here select one edge move it to the middle and it will snap and it snaps you may not see it but it had snapped so now i will control r add one probably here okay here it's mirrored so it should be also here but uh, we don't see it whatever i'll put this okay it's mirrored it's nice now this i will move here mm -hmm. then i will add one more loop in why am i doing this so we'll see there it's fine one more in here this is for the sharp corner and i will move all those a little bit on the side and here i will add, I will add another one there is a lot of adding moving Ugh. sometimes i'm tired of this you know i'm old for this you know it's too much for me now i will go and delete this and we kind of starting to have so you see from simple object to something more interesting but you have to uh, go through all the steps otherwise it will not be fine so i will add one more loop in here why am i doing this you will see just in a second now let me see how this looks exactly okay okay i think i got it now i will add a solidify modifier a little bit bigger more solid more solid i think this is okay solidified modifier will be applied and now what i will do is go to tab yeah i did something i didn't want to do but whatever okay uh, from the front view and with this i will select the whole top and make it a little bit smaller i don't want it to be that thick it was too thick now i will go here and i'll select this and scale it up ah you see it now press a move it here it should be fine relatively looks kind of decent yeah probably it's fine i will move this a little bit this way so it's more interesting it's like a trap it's not square it's like traps trapezoid trapezoid now move it this way and this way that's why i didn't kind of make this on angle because it will be much difficult to to, to do this after 
it's an angle. It has to stay straight on the axis. And now, when we're ready, it's, we're not ready yet, but when we're ready, we can make it on an angle. We'll see. Now here I will cut, because I think I need to cut in here with K, and cut this, and cut this, enter. We have to press enter, because if we don't, it will not cut it, basically. And we'll have to do it again. I'll do this, so it's more sharp. Not completely convinced by this, but it's fine. Maybe I will put one edge loop around everything, like this. Hopefully here in the middle, we don't have a plane. Let's see, by the way, do we, oh, we have, we have to delete this. Basically, this, this is a no, no. Uh, but I have clipping, why is it not clipped? Whatever, I don't, I don't mind, it's okay. I, I found it, so it's fine. Now I can scale this a little bit like that. Maybe move this GG, double G. You know what double G does, or if you don't know, it does something. <laughs> double G is moving the vertices or whatever along the other vertices, which is sometimes pretty useful. So I will try this and then move this edge this way. Basically, I'm trying to make it not so awful looking, but this will be. This will eat some of our polygons, which I don't like. Whatever. Now, subdivision surface. Increase it. Then, will we need it to be more uh, flat, not so round? Maybe. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit more we can make it. So, A. And then Shift E. And just a little bit. Not too much. Now it's okay. And of course, this, I don't need it to be, so I will just, yes. And this, and this. Shift E, and then go down until it's done. I'm talking like a robot again. Sorry about it. Sorry about that. It's okay. Don't worry about it. No. We can increase this at four. And we have a pretty nice handle. Okay, the handle is done. We can select it and put it in place whatever we want, uh, whenever we want. Now I want to see how this will handle here. Let's see, by the way, if we have inverted faces somewhere. And yes, we have here. So I will select this. Go to tab. Then select this with L. I don't know why, but those faces are very giantly messed up. So let me think. I'll select this S to scale it down and probably ah, like this. Yes. So I'll scale it so much it fixed itself. Now I will do this like this here. Scale S. Very cool. Very cool. It's nice. I love it. I love it. Just amazing. And now, of course, I will select everything and Alt N, flip. Now it's okay. Now it's not red, which is great. We don't need red faces anywhere. They will be flipped. They will pose a threat to our whole existence. Or just they will make problems for us. Which we don't want. At least, maybe we don't want. Or we want problem. Do we want problems? No. Probably not. I will put this in the middle, or at least kind of in the middle. It's relatively middle-ish. Let's press 7 on the numpad and see it from the top, and this will kind of be in the middle. Of course, if we want to see uh, to put it exactly in the middle, there is a way, but uh, I will not do it, <laughs> because I don't want to do it. Now, yeah, we have to put our... 3D cursor in the middle and align it to the 3D cursor, it will go exactly in the middle and then we will move it only on one or two axes to go wherever we want, but this is too much. I think this will be okay. This big, it's okay. And uh, I don't know, by the way, what is this exactly, this thing, but we'll see. Now, let's see the belt. The belt, I 
obviously will start it from a plane and then I will extrude, extrude and then I'll have to make this kind of a thing in here, which I'm not sure, but yeah, a plane will uh, kind of, for a starting point will be fine. So, shift A, plane, we have it. Then press tab and we are live. Now we'll start doing the thing. I'm not sure we need to do it with symmetry or whatever. So probably we will not do it with symmetry or mirror in this case. Yeah, it's called mirror here. So let's call it mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Let me, by the way, press 7 to uh, get it from the top and put some grid. Okay, so the grid show us exactly where the mirror is, uh, where the, the middle of the middle point is. So I will make it to the middle. This I will also try to put it in the middle like this. Uh, but the this kind of a weapon, it's not a weapon, it's kind of, a, I'm not sure, some, something. But uh, it will not be in the middle, so we'll see. Now I will smash this and try to make it as thick as this area here. And then we will start doing it with extruding. By the way, I will shift D and move it up on Z axis. And then I will select only this and make it small. Then I will increase the size of it and make kind of a, this area here, this thing. But I will make it later. For now, let's concentrate on the belt itself. So the belt has to wrap around here. So I will extrude down. So I press E to extrude and probably will have to go down, yes. Then I will press E and uh, go this way, which is Y axis. So I'll press Y. Okay. Very simplistic. I'm making it now because I want it to be very simple in the beginning. Then I will add more geometry and I will start to make it look nicer. But for now, we need simplicity. Then E and Y again. So extrude on Y axis until we get to this point. Then we'll E and Z axis to go up. And then uh, we need to go back. Okay. So E and Y axis, but this time in this, this way. So it will be around here. So yes, we can always scale and take everything and move it around. It's pretty easy. So I'm not concerned about that. I will add control R in here and just move it like this. So it's more like um, in the concept. Let's also do this here. It's amazing. Now I think it's looking kind of fine. Of course, this area will go up. We will add one subdivision in here and move it down. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but this thing in here, the, the plane should go a little bit like here, for example. And this should be a little bit longer, but we'll see how to select all of those. We have to go to either uh, Alt Z, which is our uh, kind of see through mode or Shift Z. And we select here and move a little bit like this. Yeah, I can go and select this and move it a little bit back. So I have more space and this started to look pretty nice. Shift Z again to go out of this mode. And here I will do this control R. No, I have to go to tab control R like this and scale it like, oops, scale it, please. No, it doesn't want to scale because I messed up my, uh, maybe local. No. It doesn't want to scale. I'm not sure what I do. No, 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 no. This is a no, no. Okay, this is fine. Oh, now it's scaling. Okay. So I fixed it with bounded box center. I will control R again, scroll, then I will click and then I will extrude like this. Then I will delete the middle part. Probably I will delete the middle part at some point, but I'm not sure 
whether I should do it now. By the way, the middle part I can shift D and move it up and then scale it so I can make this little tiny trunk in there. So I will put it like this. You see, I'm using everything I can just to then X faces just to do whatever I need to do. L for this, scale it down and it looks promising. Not the best, promising, just promising. Okay, now I need thickness on only this. So I will separate this and this by right click separate selection. Now it's separate. Now we can try to select something else, then select this, then add solidify modifier and the thickness should be around this position. And of course I will uh, apply the solidify modifier, why not? And then I will go tab and select this and this extrude it on Z axis down, only on Z axis. All right. Then I will extrude it on Z axis again, Z axis. I, yeah. I'm pressing it. Now I select this and this and then bridge faces. And I think this is what uh, I have to do. I'm not sure. Now control plus it's not working well. So I will try control plus here. It's not working well. So I basically will go like this, select only these faces and move them a little bit up. Hopefully this will be okay. Of course, it will take more adjustments. But for now, I think this is what we need. And of course, if we want, we can subdivision surface, go to at least four levels, then press A to select everything and shift E to make it sharper. It should be nice. And this thing here, I don't like it to be that thick. So I will select only it and uh, I will put it up. Then I will select only the bottom part of it and then GG to move it up. So yeah, with GG, I'm moving it up along the lines, which is fine. I'll press L and move it down. So well, you notice that when you learn to work with Blender fast and efficient with the shortcuts and everything, you will be able to do everything. But don't expect yourself to be able to do everything I do in the beginning, from the beginning. It will be difficult. It will take you time. It will take effort. It will take... Yeah, it took me a couple of hundred hours to kind of get to this point. And if I continue to work with Blender, I probably will, it will be easier and easier for me. So I'm pretty, yeah, pretty happy. Now, we select this with Alt-Q and we continue working on this area. So let's see this thing here. Uh, okay, will be around this area here. It will be inside. This will probably will have to add Let's add a few control B and like this. Yes, maybe one more. Okay. And now I will move them up. Since it's very simple geometry, it's very easy to move everything and to put it in position. It's very nice, but that's because we made it pretty, pretty low poly. And if you want to not have troubles, give yourself I mean this and make it very low. If you make it a little bit higher poly, it will cost you a lot. Now I don't even have a middle line, but I will make it uh, just right now, probably. Because it's almost done. I kind of like what is happening. Here, we may do this. We may select those edges or whatever, and just make it a little bit bigger and a little bit wider. So, because he will take it from here, he will grab it uh, from this edge. So, we need this. I will control B and add a little bit more geometry here. And in this area, I will not add. Probably this will come with, with something else. Whatever, we'll see. Now, I might add control R in here two times just in case, just a little bit here, and then control R two times and move it in here. Okay, now 
we will see. My idea here is I have to make it so I can do a low poly. And if I can do a low poly, everything is okay. If I cannot do a low poly, everything is not okay. So I have to be able to do a low poly. Those things I will move up and this I will move down. So they will meet kind of in the middle when we put our thickness on. And it will be in any moment. And let's put the thickness just in case. Solidify modifier, it looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, you see how this started from nothing and uh, end up uh, looking relatively fine. Control R. And then I will take this edge and move it, of course, forward like this. Amazing, just amazing. Of course, if we want to have this kind of holes and detail, we have to add more polygons in this area. It will not be possible without adding a lot more polygons in this area. So I will add just uh, in case, but we have to be careful because those polygons will kind of um, make it difficult for us to make more changes. It will be more and more difficult to make changes. Of course, we can always use this proportional editing and uh, select something and then G move it. What? Why is this so big? The proportional editing is very big. Control Z. Let me see how big it is. F. Hmm. Cannot make it smaller. What's happening? I select this and I want to move it. Yeah, the proportional editing in this case, the scale of it is pretty big. And I'm not exactly sure how to. Yeah, let's try it. Select it. And G. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. We can work it out. G. Move it. G. Move it. So, but I don't want it. I want it to be more geometrical uh, because this way I will be able to uh, retopologize it easier. And retopologizing is, I always say it's an issue and it's it's always an issue. So we have to be careful about uh, retopologizing. Of course, here I will try to make it 1.3, a little bit thicker. I don't want it to be thin. I don't ever want anything to be thin, as you probably already know. I ever always want to make everything a little bit thicker and yeah, I will disable the proportional editing because I don't want it here. I'll do this. All right. Here in the bottom, it's kind of okay, but I will just move it down more and this way. And probably here, I will add a bevel, control B, which will be just two polygons and move them back. And this should work. So this is almost everything, but we have a certain thing here, which I'm not sure exactly what it is. I have to ask and I'll probably ask my superiors because uh, it's an um, element which will add polygons. And I don't know if it's relevant to anything, which we'll see. So this kind of a pipe in here, by the way, we needed to have uh, an opening or whatever. I'm not sure exactly what is this. There is an opening here and I will make it. I will select this and how to make this kind of opening is a mystery. But I will solve this mystery by just starting. If you don't start and I already told you that if you you will never make it and uh, you better just do it. So I will select those edges, press I to insert inset inward and then press E to do it like this. So this will be our kind of window. I don't uh, think we need more than that. Probably this will be it. I can select this and press I again. So I can have a little bit more polygons there. And this thing, by the way, I can select with it L and move it into a little bit more into position. It, it's not inside this barrel. It's kind of it's interesting. I'm not sure I want to put it into position right now. Let me think. We have to kind of rotate it a little bit and put it 
in a certain way maybe 45 degrees will be nice because 45 degrees will be mean will mean that uh, we will be able to straighten it up later if we want to retopologize it and then with the retopology and everything we can put it back again we'll see so this is pretty thick but i will select it scale it down i'll make it thinner as it is in the concept and here also i will try to do so although first i have to move this down so it will not interfere and uh, i will just scale down this yeah press l and move this up it's kind of in the right position here i will go and move this into position again yes it's uh, not exactly i will move it a little bit this way it's fine now this in the middle here we'll have to increase the size of it we don't want it to be too small also these pipes they are interesting but let's uh, look it from the side from here and this other pipe i will also move a little bit like this so they are completely in in line not completely they they have to be relatively in line with each other and when we rotate all of these hopefully the things will go as planned i will shift d and put this down and move it in position around here because this will be the entrance point to to the bottom let's see here put it here so uh, some people were asking me in the comments would you do a hard surface in blender yeah here it is pretty much a lot of complex hard surface and it's difficult to get more complex than this i mean yeah it could be probably but this is pretty complex as you can see pretty complex although it's um, it's combined with, with there are a lot of just simple objects combined to this but it's not super simple so i will select this with pressing l and i will rotate it like this uh, minus 45 degrees okay and i will try to put it into position by the book okay this position is almost good it has to go a little bit more into like this um, the distance between the barrel and the barrel and this should be kind of big i mean it's not super close so i think this should work and we have to make kind of an addition here yeah to this a little bit but uh it's it will be later if we don't forget if we forget we will not do it i'm just saying because many people will say uh what happens if you forget I, i'm telling you we will not do it and that's it <laughs> that's that's my final verdict on this matter thank you very much now i will uh, i'll have to do this kind of things in here let me think about how to do them one has to be in this area so in the middle here this and another one should be around this area around here i will scale them a little bit but i will try to scale them a little bit less very very slightly scale here also slight scale and then i can bevel them and extrude them and there will be this or i can separate those and what to do extrude them again so it's uh yeah let's separate them i will select this and this maybe this could go a little bit lower so bb and go down no it doesn't want to go down so uh no no bb g g g g b g you know it's the same so g g here and g g here and i will by the way go ahead and select this 
and shift select this and now I can shift D now they are separate object and now I can since this separate object should be selected now I can extrude it so E it's not a good idea alt E with extrude fa along face normals and this will be nice this should work I can alt S to scale it a little bit no it's not a good idea so just S no, it's not a good idea, so I will leave it like this for now. All right. All right. So now we need an arrow here and a few more things, and it will be almost over. Just for a little bit over an hour, everything is kind of done, which is great. I love it. It's good to, to make the things fast. So in order to do this arrow, I will take this, Shift D, right click. And then move it a little bit. Then I will scale it down. And this will be our the front part of this arrow here. And then I will extrude some edges to make the arrow itself. So I'll press 2. Select this one, this one, this one, this one. Or just one I will select. And then control select the next one. And then E to extrude Z axis. So I'll extrude like this. It's difficult. Yeah, it's not uh, super easy. Everything is kind of, I will like this, just move it inward. And this looks like a nice arrow for now. It's not the best, but there is no best arrow, you know. Of course, we will E extrude and we'll have our basic arrow. Now, if we add a subdivision surface modifier, then everything will go to straight to hell, as you can see. But we can select this and E to in insert a little bit. Yeah, it's it's not moving very well. I will also add one more edge in here. It's not working super well. And of course, for this thing here again, I'm selecting this and pressing I to have this. For this kind of surfaces, we have to have that. It's inevitable. Then I will go to 3. And hopefully it will not crash. Then I will start to sharpen those with Shift E. Yeah, it's moving super slow. It's lagging a lot. I don't know why, since these are super low poly, but uh, it's, there are a lot of things in this object. So maybe we can separate them, it's not a big deal. For example, I will separate this with this inside, L. And uh, yeah, we can separate them in another object, it will be fine. So, right click, separate, selection. And now they are in another object, we can Alt-Q and Alt-Q here. Yeah, we have an, to have another object to Alt-Q on, and then here again. And of course, I can solo it, go to the back, press I, and just make sure this is all right. And here we go, we are fine. And of course, we can add another edge in here. And this looks fine. Now, we have to add another object in, inside here. How we will add it? Let me think. Okay, I know how. Uh, I will select this inner thing. Shift D and move it like this. Then I will insert it. Oops. No, I will make it just smaller. So S to make it small. Small. And move it here. And you will see how I will do from nothing. I will do something. And this will be something like a miracle. So brace for it. Now I will press I. Do this. Then I will delete this and then I will select this, control this. Uh, no, I will press this, control here and control here. And then I will press X and delete those faces. And we have this object. And thank you very much for your cooperation. We have to end this video. At some point I will extrude this and then go ahead and select those edges. Yeah, I will probably have to do this. 
you know, in order to select all those edges too. And then Shift E and sharpen them a lot. I can sharpen a lot in here, don't worry. And this is the result. I will move this back. And we have the arrow, we have everything. Amazing, thank you very much. Let me see if I have turned something here. So face orientation, yes. They looked like they are turned in the separate direction, but we will fix it. We'll go to this object, press tab, L to select, L to select, and then that, that's because of the, probably because of the extruding. I extrude inward and they are flipped. Now Alt N and flip. And now they are okay. Is there anybody else? No, it's fine. Everything looks kind of nice. Of course, we need to do more uh, for this weapon. We need to um, do the rivets. By the way, let's do the rivets because they are the most annoying thing ever. And I want to kind of get rid of them. So I will go to object mode. Then I will add um, UV sphere. And my UV sphere is very small because I made some experiments and I made it to be 10 centimeters or one centimeter something like this big but i will move it here then i will go and scale it a little bit okay and then i'll press no i will go back here and let me try something here i will go to snap face center align rotation to target and move and rotate and then i will alt d and snap it to the surface here. This will be one of our, this is Alt-D. Why am I doing Alt-D? Because with Alt-D, I'm not only copying it, but when I work on one of the objects, it will work on all of them, which is, I think it's great because this will allow us to make rivets and then change them uh, in, in, in action. So, I want to get out of here, so I will add, I will go here and then, and then I will press 3, get here, I, because this is very important. I'll do this, and then I will go to this edge and shift E and make it sharper. Not super sharp though. 0 0.5 uh, something is most of the time fine. Here and here. We can go and shift E again to make this sharper. Not too much though, not plus one, plus 0 0.5. And you will see it in the top left corner. Crease 0 0.5. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Everything is fine. I'll select this and this and shift E and again around 0 0.5 four five something like this and it's looking fine of course this rivet now we have to kind of change the position of it what did i do i i did texture paint no i want object mode i will select this and g move it into kind of a position here for example then i will alt d and move this into position here and then Alt D and move this in position here and they will not be exactly where we want them but we can always change their position of course also I can select them right click and uh, I don't see it. right click and shade smooth so they will look smooth of course later we probably will have to add some subdivisions but uh, yeah they are looking almost like nice rivets already and of course we will add a mirror modifier at some point and they will be on the other side but yeah face orientation mm, it's starting to look pretty nice we will continue in the next video because there are no uh it's not enough two videos are not enough obviously for this it's a little bit more complicated so i have to do it maybe at least two hours until it's ready so for two hours we'll be able to probably make it and it's a pretty low amount of time, two hours is nothing, but uh, bear in mind that I am working constantly. 
I'm not taking little rests or working slowly. I'm trying to work constantly and fast. That's why I'm able to do it fast. And also I'm pretty fast. I told you already I'm fast in every uh, way, which sometimes is not good, but whatever, doesn't matter. Let's go and see you in the next video, which will be some whatever. We'll see.